This is not a DJI drone. It is a flawless and perfect copy of the DJI Air 3. It is a clone. It is not just some simple reboxing or some simple badge removal. This is extremely thorough rebranding. This is priced where DJI realistically would price their drone with an RC, the drone, and no extra batteries. They actually don't offer an Air 3 that has just the drone and the RC. They either offer it with the RC N2 and the drone, but not the DJI RC2 and the drone. Interestingly, it's packaged pretty much the same way that DJI packages theirs. Even have some of the same icons that they've used. Very similar per se. So opening this up, this is packaged identical. The branding, of course, is not DJI. It's the Spectre branding. And it appears as if it is a flawless copy. I mean, truly flawless. Uh, the thing you'll notice is that normally there is a DJI logo here on the Air 3. This is not the case. You now have, of course, this. It's identical. I mean, it truly is identical. Uh, the same prompts for camera, same camera on that front there. This is the Spectre RC, and this is the DJI RC 2. They are pretty much identical. Where the logo for DJI is... That's been put out with this black box. Funny enough, even when you boot this up, it has a rebranding. It follows the same pattern. It is really the same software. Same noises. An older version, this the Spectre RC has an older version of the DJI software, but it realistically, same thing. It all looks the same, profile is the same. You can start your thing up, camera view, it only gives the option for the air, but it, it really is the same thing. It's of course, anywhere that you would expect to see DJI is of course going to then have Spectre. So here you can see it's all rebranded. It's all different app versions. This looks like done a control F on the source code and replaced it all with Spectre. We start opening this up. The batteries are all rebranded. Anywhere that there's a sticker is an entirely different sticker. You can take a look inside the side of the drone and see that it's all rebranded. Even on the sides, it's all rebranded. So fun fact, they originally sent me a kit that had difficulties registering your account. So you couldn't um, authenticate the drone and you couldn't fly the drone at all. So it was an expensive brick basically, which sucks because I know how much this hardware costs and it's basically just an overrated brick. So they sent me another one that we couldn't get this firmware to flash. But interestingly enough, it's because this software is at a lower version, which means they've made some oopsies. What do I mean by oopsies? As in you very clearly can see that there was some times that it says DJI and it uh, shouldn't have. So also it appears that the ver firmware or the version of software on the controller is has the ability to access some settings at the factory that I don't think are ever have ever been seen before. One of those is I think the testing menu for DJI because this isn't like new testing so this is something that very likely is part of DJI and not supposed to be seen so so weirdly enough the older firmware the older version the broken one has this weird logo I think it's the Snapdragon logo and then it switches over to Spectre so also a fun fact I tried doing this on my actual DJI controller but it appears that there is a way to access a secret menu on this controller. It will take you to the secret setting menu. And as you can see, there is a lot of different options here. Um, fun fact, you can get your controller to play dubstep uh, if you test the speakers. So your DJI controller will play a Chinese dubstep. Uh, let's do that real quick. Here we go. This just got demonetized, by the way. So funny enough, they call this the Spectre RC, but it is called in here 
the RC331, which is actually the RC name of the DJI RC2. Notice the date that this firmware was compiled was October 8th, which was around the same time that the drone was released, which pretty much shows that this has been, I want to say, under some level of development since the beginning, which makes me lean heavily towards the fact that this is probably sanctioned by DJI rather than being some, like, offshoot. So fun fact, when I plug in the RC, it shows up as the Spectre RC, not the DJI RC2. However, we can take a look at some of these files and we can find references to DJI stuff in here. Um, the most notable is if you're familiar with Waypoint Map, it's a software service that I created that allows you to automatically fly the drone and it relies heavily on the Waypoints feature. So if we actually deep dive into the Waypoints file, there's references to DJI's like documentation in the files that it creates for Waypoints. It is identical to what you would get on their RC2 but if we even go into the waypoint missions, we can take a look here. This KMZ file, when we decrypt it, we can see that it has this clear reference to DJI's documentation about how to use this file. So again, a clear reference to DJI within this device. So funny enough, I was actually able to load the waypoint map files into the Spectre Air and fly an automated mission just like I would with the Air 3. Funny enough, if you're interested in checking that out, and figure out how to do that. There's a link at the tutorial video for that in the description. But for the main point is this actually is like fully compatible waypoint map, which is actually a pretty strict guidelines for how to fly the drone. But we can go to properties now and we can take a look at the details and see just kind of what's inside of this. Notice that it lists the Spectre as the camera maker. So fun fact, if we extract the metadata on this, we can look and see if there's any other references to DJI on here. But notice how they've renamed and rebranded everything here. But everything is identical to DJI, even down to the lowest level. So all this has been rebranded at such a thorough and deep level. I went through and I took this apart to see if there was any of the water detection stickers that they usually put in electronics, especially that DJI often puts in electronics. And no, all of this device was removed, any reference to DJI, no DJI stickers anywhere in here, which to me is even more thorough than just a simple rebranding. This is really, really thorough to go hardware and software to such a deep extent. So if you notice, I'm not talking a lot about the camera. I'm probably going to make a dedicated video like just reviewing the drone. But realistically, this is identical to the Air 3. It is phenomenal cameras, just like DJI would make, because it is DJI. And it is really all across the board great. The pictures are great. Both lenses work. Everything works and functions. The only downside, of course, is that it's running an older version of the firmware. And I do have my doubts that that will get updated, because a lot of the new features they've added, like you know the using the obstacle avoidance cameras as, um, I guess, navigation cameras when you're flying the drone, as well as like the AR overlay, those features were awesome additions, but I doubt that they'll be able to remove all of DJI's branding quick enough to actually put reasonable updates. And I would be curious to see if we ever get updates for this drone or we're stuck on this same default firmware version. When you buy a DJI drone, for example, you get access to that ecosystem. You get access to the ability to buy more batteries, you get access to like replacement parts, and you get that DJI like care refresh. Not to say that, you know, I'm a shill for the refresh, I've never bought it, but I've always been able to fix the drones that break. When I crash something, I'm able to fix it. Um, that's personally the way that I choose to go. And a big concern for me is if this crashes, you know, it's basically no parts because it seems like, at least with the batteries, uh, they're proactively preventing other kinds of batteries from going in here. I does raise some concerns about, you know, compatibility with other parts. Could I even get replacement parts for this? Um, there's a lot of, yeah, the drone's great. The drone's perfect. It's just, there's a lot of questions raised about like, can I reliably run this in case something happens to it? And I would hate for something to happen where maybe, uh, one of the arms, I don't say the arms are probably, you'd be safe to get somewhere, but I say like the camera cracked or whatever, and you wanted to replace the camera, you couldn't use, potentially couldn't use DJI cameras. And I guess with the batteries, batteries only last so long. And if you can't even get any replacement batteries, well, 
that that really presents an issue. Like me, I like to at least have a couple batteries when I'm flying, um, so that way I can like switch them out and stuff. And if you can only get one battery, that's already a big draw. So I think like yeah, it's priced right around where I would expect DJI to price it, uh, just given that it only has the RC. And really, are you saving that much money? by going with you know hundred dollars two hundred dollars cheaper and not getting the extra batteries but you can't ever get any more batteries or at least currently can't get any more batteries it's just it doesn't seem logical i could see this maybe if it was a little cheaper maybe it was like a thousand dollars then that would be great but it's just like you not only when you buy a dji product you're not just paying for dji's drone you're paying for the ecosystem the support ecosystem well it's it's popular right and this is not popular. This has no backing whatsoever. And if this truly is not a shoot-off or a sanctioned part of DJI, this has a real and present potential to be blocked in the U.S. They can put in a court order. They can do all that. And then you can't access the authentication servers. One of the issues that I had on this early version of this drone was that I couldn't even access the authentication servers. And I actually thought they had gotten blocked. For a long period of time so if they truly are not an offshoot of dji then there's a real present issue that you could buy this and have a break or 10 five weeks down the road it's a break and that's a wild thought to spend a thousand some dollars on this so there is a lot like yes i've talked a lot about how the drone is great the drone is great it's flawless but why would you pay realistically the same amount as a dji drone for a lot of unknown. If three weeks down the road, if a month down the road, they come out and they say, hey, we've got extra batteries, we've got replacement parts, we've got refresh, I'd be interested. I seriously would say, okay. Um, but I think the only person that's really gonna buy this is some type of government agency. That's who they have to be targeting because if you're targeting a consumer, this is a really hard sell, especially at that price point. Like if this was $800, Definitely. I see this as a much better alternative, but it's just you're losing out on so much and there's such a great unknown. I, I, It's hard for me to look at this like this is a great drone, but the first one they sent me is a brick because it can't connect to the authentication servers. I'd hate for something like them to get shut out and can't connect and can't use it, especially on something so nice.